Join us now uh, to talk about uh, what the phase one trade deal means for the markets. Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management. You like the Colts tonight? Do you know? Uh, and, uh, and Jeff South, chief investment. I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about that. Uh, chief investment strategist at Capital Wealth Planning. Jeff, uh, I'll start with you. After a 25% gain, uh, you point out typically you get at least 9 or 10 percent uh, uh, the next year, and people are still talking about, uh, in Barron's, very muted, 3, 4 percent. So once again, we still haven't convinced anyone that this is a, a, a good market. No, that's right. And there's not many people left around that have seen a secular bull market. On the phase one trade deal, the people I talked to in D.C., and I used to live there, uh, have a hard time believing that the president, Xi Z is going to sign a phase one trade deal that has a snapback clause in it. So I think Becky's questions are right. There's a lot of questions about what's going to go on with this phase one deal. Well, then what's that mean? So you think that near term we could have a pullback, but then next year we get, uh, in your view, what, like 9 or 10 percent? Or, or it's, it's unlikely after a big gain like that, you point out historically to, to have a 10 percent loss or more, that that's not usually in the cards. I think maybe, how many years did that not happen where we had a 25 percent gain? Well, typically after a 20 percent plus gain, you get an 11 percent gain in the next year. And right. I think you're going to get that again in, in 2020. Joe, there's a lot of people that still do not believe this rally. The economy is reaccelerating. Earnings continue to come in better than people think. And uh, the, the, the investing public, the individual investor, is scared to death. That's not the way bull markets end. Actually, Ryan, you, yeah. Uh, yeah, you feel the same way? Or? I'm 100 percent with Jeff on this. And I mean, Jeff's one of the only strategists that was really bullish last year or this year on Wall Street. So, Jeff, I'm a big fan. Just wanted to say that. And, Thank you. And that's, and that's what we see here with our, our clients is, I mean, they come in or you have prospective clients coming in. They're just sitting with so much cash right now. I mean, you look at we had a quarter trillion dollars come out of the market this year. Retail investors just are not invested in this market. You were actually, uh, Brian, pointed out about Barron's, I guess, right? The Barron's being in the low. Uh, I like I mean, to make what, fun of strategists. Again, yeah, once again, they're down at, what's the average, 4% for next year, right? They're saying up maybe 4%, very muted, as they were this year. And, right. you know, if you look at most strategists, they've been dead wrong because we've been in a booming bull market this year. So there, it's still a Tina market, too, right? I mean, there's not a lot going on. There is no alternative to, to and actually the Journal has a kind of an interesting piece today. They finally notice investors are pulling back from safe havens. Uh, as e worries have eased about a global slowdown, right? Yeah, exactly right. I mean, if you look at just we're in a yield-starved world right now, right? I mean, if you look at bond yields, I mean, you can get a great 10-year bond at 1.36% right now. I mean, you know the world's got to be crazy when you have yields like that on a place that's defaulted only in the last couple of years. Whereas stock yields, I mean, if you look at globally right now, you could buy a global portfolio paying over 4%. And those yields are increasing. So it is kind of like there is no alternative if you're trying to invest your money, especially to grow over inflation. Uh, at this point, uh, you, don't, you don't see interest rates headed up at all, but you like international. You think we ought to go all around the planet, right? Why? Because valuation? Stocks are cheaper elsewhere? I mean, valuation matters. If I can get the same growth rates overseas. You can't get the same growth rates overseas. Uh, earning, if you look at earnings, no, earnings specifically, yeah, really? earnings look just as good overseas as they do here, and you get a valuation that's cheaper. I mean, some valuations, like we could be jumping out of the uh, basement window. I mean, they're so low. So you have very low risk here, and again, you're getting yields that you're just not getting in other asset classes.